Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Good morning, friends. As minister of Motherwell St. Mary's Parish Church, I'd like to welcome all of you to this online service today. Today is the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, but of course, it is also Remembrance Sunday. During our service today, we will have the traditional two-minute silence across 11 o'clock with the rest of the nation. I know that some of you will want to participate in this from your doorsteps, so you'll be able to, at the appropriate time in the service, uh, when the silence is announced, it'll be by my colleague John Thompson, then you can go to the doorsteps and return for the rest of the service, if that's what you would like to do. We meet together today, on this Remembrance Sunday, to celebrate God's peace. God's peace which passes all understanding. We meet together today with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for those who have lived and died in the service of this, our country. And we come to ask God's help and blessing upon ourselves that we might be worthy of the sacrifice that others have made on our behalf. Two years ago, we marked the 100th anniversary of the armistice which brought an end to the First World War, a war which at the time was described as the war to end all wars. Sadly, 21 years later, in 1939, the world found itself once again on the precipice of war, a second world war, even more deadly and devastating than the first. And this year, 2020, marks the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. Sadly though, not the end of war itself, for war still rages in our world today, from Yemen to Syria and beyond. And so, on this special and solemn occasion, we meet also to repent of war and violence as human beings, to pray for peace and justice in our world, and importantly, to recommit ourselves, our lives afresh into God's service so that we might be peacemaking, loving, caring people. Our opening hymn is two verses of Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Let us worship together now. Let's join together in our opening prayer, which will conclude with the saying of the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, we come this day 
to remember and to learn. To remember the lessons of the past, the cost of war, the price of peace, the scope of human depravity, the extent of human sacrifice. Remind us all of what we owe, lest we forget. Help us to learn these lessons, and so to live and work for peace, to fight only what is evil and corrupt, to serve and not to count the cost, to give our all in the cause of a better and more just and godly world. Remind us of all that we owe, lest we forget. Gracious and generous God, we come to remember all that you have done, your creativity, your divine presence throughout history, your gift of Jesus, your love through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit experienced daily in our living. Remind us of all that we owe, lest we forget. And caring God, forgive us that so often and so easily we do forget. We fail to remember your sovereign, transforming power. We fail to remember you in the good times as well as the bad. We fail to count our blessings and dwell instead upon our burdens. We fail to recognize your hand at work in every moment of our lives. Lord, have mercy upon us. And Creator God, through all things, You remember us. So help us to remember You. Remind us of all that we owe, lest we forget. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our friend, who taught us how to say together the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's my pleasure and privilege now to pass over to my friend and colleague, the Reverend John Thompson, to lead us in our call to remembrance. Let us remember the kindness of God and his favor to us in our time of need. Let us remember the courage, devotion to duty, and the self-sacrifice of the men and women in our armed forces, the toil, endurance, and suffering of those who were not in uniform, the support of those who sent us help from afar or came and stood by our side. Let us remember those who were wounded in the fight, those who perished in air raids at home, those who fell in battle and are buried at sea or in some corner of a foreign field, and especially those whom we have known and loved, whose place is forever in our hearts. Let us remember those who were our enemies, whose homes and hearts are as bereft as ours, whose dead lie also in a living tomb of everlasting remembrance. Let us remember those who came back, whose lives still bear the scars of war, those who lost sight or limbs or reason, those who lost faith in God and the hope for humanity. Let us remember the continuing grace of God, whose love holds all souls in life and to whom none is dead, but all are alive forever. Amen. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old, Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Alan Joyce is going to lay for us today our congregational poppy wreath. And afterwards, Gillian will read for us John McRae's famous poem in Flanders Field.
In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Thank you, John. Thank you, Gillian. Thank you, Alan. In response, let us join together in Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you. Looking forward to next week, Gillian is going to be preaching for the first time, and I look forward to that very much, I'm sure all of you do, in the congregation. And Gillian has chosen the theme for next week, and is going to introduce our Junior Church Challenge, which is based on the theme of next week's service. So I'm delighted now to pass over to Gillian to tell us what the challenge is for next week. Good morning, Junior Church. Uh, before I start on next week's challenge, I just want to say a big thank you to you all for the tributes that you've put in for Remembrance Day by way of your poppy tributes and of sharing um, your, your memories of people, um, families or friends who we especially remember today. So thank you. And although we can't meet together, um, all your Tributes are up um, outside or on the, the window so that people from outside can see. So thank you very much for that. Um, next week, I'm going to be talking about love. So what I would like you to do is, I would like you to make, I think there's a, a slide up as well, um, of a mobile. Or a, and it's not a mobile phone, a, a mobile as in dropping things down from 
um, the heart. And I've made a heart and it says, love is. And I've attached things on the strings about what I think um, love is. Now that can be either the way you show love or the way that people show love to you. And I've put some things on like being kind to everyone. And I know that can be difficult sometimes, but that's what, what Jesus asked us to do, um, is to be kind to everyone. And I've put sharing time together, although that's pretty hard just now, but we've found ways through social media and technology that we can still do that. I've put knowing Jesus, helping, family, and sharing. So I'm really looking forward to see what you come up with next week. And if you just hand it in, in the usual way, or um, send pictures, and we can have a look um, at them. And I'm really excited to see what you come up with for next week. So thank you very much, Junior Church. And as I say, I'm looking forward to see what you come up with next week. Thank you, Gillian. So am I as well, because love is so, so vital, and love is so, so important. Our church news today is a little bit earlier in the service, just to allow the service to, to flow on Remembrance Sunday. So I'm going to bring our church news now. And we begin with sad news this week, because this week we lost one of our oldest members, one of our oldest men and a dedicated elder of the congregation, Mr. Alec Miller from 167 Camp Road. Alec was a fantastic man, a gentleman, someone who was loved and respected by so many people in this congregation and by many others too. I had one of his district uh, contact me during the week to say just what a fantastic, caring elder Alec was. So Alec will be missed by all of his church friends, but not least by his family who loved him and cared for him so much. So, Alex's funeral service is going to be this Friday, 13th November, 1.30 p.m. at Hollytown Crematorium. Of course, because of the restrictions, it is simply a close family who are able to be at the service. But all of us can, in our own ways, remember Alec at that time, and indeed at this time too. And we remember he is now at peace and at rest in the care of God. Well done, good and faithful servant. We have a number of birthdays this week. Uh, the first birthday, uh, which is today, is Jennifer Ward. Jennifer is one of our junior church, 11 today. So a very happy birthday to you, Jennifer, I hope it's a, a lovely birthday. And then throughout the week, we have some birthdays coming up. Valerie Craig, Anne Gibson, Sandy Sharp, Sharon Millen, Fraser Graham, Linda Kennedy, Sheila Platt, and Susan Hamilton. Now, Susan, I'm told that you're 60, so I assume I'm allowed to say that today. So to all of you who are celebrating your birthday is a very, very happy birthday when it comes up this week. There are only two wedding anniversaries, and we only have one picture this week, uh, which is uh, David and Maureen. But first of all, uh, Thomas and Patricia Park are celebrating 32 years. Happy anniversary to both of you. And also pictured David and Maureen Kerr. They are celebrating 20 four years of marriage. So to all of you celebrating this week, may God's blessing be with you on behalf of myself and the whole congregation. We continue to value folks offering so, so much. The generosity of the congregation has kept us going during difficult times. And it has been difficult, not just for ourselves, but all churches and indeed for uh, people and organizations throughout the whole country. Thank you for continuing to bring your offerings to God uh, through St. Mary's Parish Church in the myriad of ways in which you do that. If you are free will offering, just a wee reminder that uh, you can hand in your offerings to the church, and people have been doing that 
Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. And also some folks have been contacting us or contacting their elder and we've been arranging for someone to collect the offering. But thank you so much for all your sacrifice and generosity. Today, as throughout the whole of the pandemic, the church leaders in Scotland, including our own moderator, are asking Christians to spend a few moments at seven o'clock, perhaps to light a candle, to think of God's light in the midst of the current darkness, and to ask for God's strength and peace and love at this time for all who are suffering. We are continuing to broadcast for the church. I know that last week there were one or two problems uh, with broadcasting to tablets and telephones, and apologies for that. Hopefully, we've been able to iron out these problems. If not, let us know, and we'll endeavor to, to do that. We want to get this broadcast to you as smooth as possible, uh, and uh, I hope that you're able to enjoy the service now being back in the sanctuary. But let us know if you have any problems. I still can't tell you when we'll have uh, members of the congregation, representative members of the congregation in, because we are still uh, working on that as a Kirk session. Uh, I know that some churches have gone back, but we're thinking uh, about starting and how that might look during uh, the phase that we're in in the current crisis. It's something we're prayerfully considering. We will let you, you know about that as soon as possible. The, the last wee thing I want to say is that uh, thank you to, to all those who sent in their, their memories of family and, and their poppies, etc., in this uh, week's Junior Church Challenge. If you tuned in this morning because of the early start, you might have missed the slideshow. Uh, it's going to play right at the end of the service again. So that's uh, the memories that people sent in, the additional poppies uh, since last week and some pictures of our church and community at Remembrance. But now, let us hear the Word of God from the Old and the New Testaments, brought to us by Gillian. Both our readings this morning come from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Our first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, Chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 5. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Our second reading comes from the book of John, reading chapter 15 from verse 12 to 17. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends 
because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Amen. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer, this Remembrance Sunday and always. Two years ago, we marked the 100th anniversary of the signing of the armistice that brought an end to the First World War. The First World War was originally called the Great War. It was described as the war that would end all wars because of its cataclysm, its disaster, the amount of lives that it lost. But incredibly, just over 20 years later, the world found itself at war once more, this time in an even greater an even more devastating conflict, the Second World War, which was to last from 1939 through to 1945, costing the lives of over 70 million people. 70 million people. And this year, 2020, marks the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. On this 75th anniversary, if only, if only we could say that the lesson of history was learned, if only we could say that the two world wars of the first part of the 20th century brought sense to humanity and an end to the brutality and the senselessness, the futility of war, if only, if only. But in reality, the lesson of history hasn't been learned. And that's a source of real, real sadness. And it's a cause, I think, too, for Christians to repent, to feel humble. For war is just as real as ever. Violence is all too prevalent in our world. Evil still lurks. Peace, peace, and love are needed. In the light of this sadness and the need for repentance and humility, what do our Bible readings say to us today on this Remembrance Sunday? Our Old Testament passage comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, a book which takes its name from the prophet Isaiah who lived during the second half of the 8th century BC. Interestingly, an almost identical passage is found in Micah 4, verses 1 to 5. Have a look for yourself. Micah was another prophet who lived around the same time as Isaiah. And the words of our Old Testament passage, they come from a dark and a dangerous and a difficult time in the history of Israel and Judah. It was a time that saw the fall of Israel in 722 BC and that saw the invasion of Judah in 701 BC. The prophets Isaiah and Micah longed in the midst of their, their life, they longed for a time when there would be peace and they identified God as the source of that peace, as the ultimate giver of peace. And they encouraged their listeners to work and pray for God's peace. In our world today, there is so often a lack of peace. It's a world where war continues to rage in Syria and Yemen and beyond, where war and oppression have caused famine and forced millions to flee from their homes as refugees, where prejudice and division are growing, where inequality and injustice 
is rife, and all of these things compounded, made worse by the COVID-19 crisis. And in such a world, the words of Isaiah and Micah speak to us with power and with resonance. Power and resonance. Calling us not just to long for peace, not just to talk about peace, but to work and pray for peace, God's peace. That peace that the Apostle Paul says passes all understanding. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus encourages us, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. My friends, this Remembrance Sunday, what more, what more can we do, you and I, to work and pray for God's peace in the world around us? I love uh, Kurt Cowter's reflection on peacemaking. It comes in his book, New Fables, Thus Spoke the Marabou. And this is what he says. I've read this before, but the, the words continually touch me and I think remembrance is a time to return to these words. Tell me the weight of a snowflake, a coal mouse asked a wild dove. Nothing, more than nothing, was the answer. A snowflake weighs practically nothing. In that case, I must tell you a marvelous story, the coal mouse said. I sat on the branch of a fir close to the trunk when it began to snow, not heavily, not in a raging blizzard, no just like in a dream, without a sound and without any violence. Since I didn't have anything better to do, I counted the snowflakes falling on the twigs and needles of my branch. Their number was exactly 3,741,952. And when the three millionth, 741,953rd, dropped on the branch. Nothing more than nothing, as you say. The branch broke off. Having said that, the coal mouse flew away. The dove, since Noah's time and authority on the matter, thought about the story for a while and finally said to herself, perhaps, perhaps, there was only one person's voice lacking for peace to come to the world. The power of the individual peacemaker, you and I, is more than we could ever know. Our New Testament passage comes from the Gospel of John and it reminds us of the need to love one another. Love being an essential ingredient of peace peace. So that might be something you want to add to your mobile uh, love is being peaceful. Importantly though, our reading from John reminds us that love and that peace are often things bought at great, great cost. On Remembrance Sunday, the words of Jesus, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends, speak to us powerfully of the sacrifice of those men and women who have given their lives in armed conflict, dying for the, the freedoms and the peace that we enjoy. Reminding us two of those men and women who have come home bearing all the scars of war in their bodies and minds. No one, says Jesus, has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends by the lives that we lead, may we be worthy of the sacrifice made on our behalf. And perhaps this Remembrance Sunday, we might think two of those men and women who are at the moment working in key occupations, who have kept our country going in recent months during this COVID-19 pandemic, often at personal risk to themselves and perhaps to their families. And remember on Sunday, of course, 
the words of Jesus also speak powerfully of his own sacrifice made on the cross at Calvary. For on the cross at Calvary, Jesus' words, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends, they came true in the greatest and most ultimate of ways. As the Apostle Peter says in his first letter to the church, Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. As we come to the end of our short reflection today, on this the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II, let us be encouraged and comforted by all that Christ Jesus has done and is doing for us. But also, let us be challenged, challenged by his words. This is my commandment, says Jesus, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, you did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. My friends, may love and peace be utmost in our hearts on this Remembrance Sunday. Tomorrow, and always. And in response to our reflections, Ronald is going to lead us in two verses of the hymn, I Have a Dream, a man once said to the tune Repton. <laughs> Let's pray together in our prayers for others. Loving God in appreciation for all the good things that you give us in life, including the gifts of sacrifice, love, and peace. Receive today the offerings of our money, our time, our talents. Receive to the offerings of our whole lives that we might be dedicated to living for justice and peacemaking today, tomorrow, always. Receive, Lord, also our prayers of concern for this, your world, and ours. Wherever there is war and violence, division 
and hate, we pray for your peace to reign. For all innocent victims of war and violence, evil and prejudice, we pray for your comfort, strength, and healing. We pray for all the members of our armed forces and their chaplains. We pray for all who govern and who have the power to influence the way of peace rather than war. For those who are unwell today, we ask your healing strength. For those who mourn a loved one, especially the family and friends of Alec Miller, we ask your comfort. For all who seek to share your love, our own selves included, we pray for your encouragement and empowerment. In the quiet of these next few moments, Lord, hear us as we make our own personal prayers spoken from our hearts this day. And Lord God, we think of the people of the United States when we prayed for last week. We have gone through a, an election over these last few days. We thank you for the new elected president of the United States, Joe Biden, and Kamala Harris, his vice president. We pray your blessing and protection upon them as they prepare for power for having an influence in the leadership of the world in the months and years ahead. And we pray for a safe and a just and a fair and a peaceful transition of power over these next few months in that country which is so important for our world. And all these are prayers we make in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. My friends, as we come to the end of our Remembrance Sunday service, the national anthem will be followed by the benediction and thereafter by our voluntary for today, which is Nimrod by Elgar, very appropriate. But first, if you're able, wherever you are, to be upstanding for the national anthem as we pray for the Queen. As we end this Remembrance Sunday service, may we each go in peace with faith, hope, and love in our hearts. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all today and forevermore. Amen and God bless. <laughs>